Kamusta na po mga parents? Sa panahon na ito, talagang malaking bagay ang ating mental health. Ang dami namin videos, pinag-uusapan namin paano mas stimulate ang development ng mga bata, ng iba't ibang edad. Pero sa totoo lang, para magawa natin yan, kailangan malusog ang ating mental health. Meron tayong isang special guest, isang psychiatrist na talagang naintindihan niya ang challenges ng parenting dahil meron siyang tatlong anak, age 7 to 13, si Dr. Lysel Trinidad Fulgencio. Maraming salamat, Dr. Lysel, at sumama ka sa video na ito. Thank you also for inviting me because this is an opportunity to actually help fellow parents. So thank you for the invitation. Dr. Lysel, Tanong ko lang po, ano ang tips ninyo sa mga parents para maalagaan ang mental health? Number one, kailangan po nating maintindihan gaano ka-importante yung role natin bilang parents because you are your child's model. Okay, therefore, we really need to take care of ourselves for us to actually take care of them at the same time yung modeling no, ng behavior kasi whatever the way we act, yun ho yung unang magiging exposure nila to a particular behavior. I think one of the most important things that you have to do when you become a parent is to set priorities. Yung concept kasi ng work-life balance, it is really a myth actually because we don't have what you call a work-life balance but mostly priorities. So, at the start of what you want to achieve, set your priorities and then take it from there. When you are clear with your priorities, then there is also a better way of handling things. No, So alam mo kung ano yung una mong gagawin and then ano yung susunod so that you don't be rattled. No? Hindi ka matataranta kapag ka magsabay-sabay sila. So that's one. Set priorities and then afterwards, be prepared also to compromise. So yan, Dok Nysel, yung sabi ninyo na mahalaga talaga tayo as parents kasi lagi nga po namin sinasabi na in child development, diba, isa sa mga gusto natin matutunan yung tinatawag na emotional regulation. And natutunan yan ng mga bata kung nakikita nila how we regulate our emotions, especially with younger kids. Emotional regulation nila ay yung tinatawag na co-regulation. Parang uh, they do it through their relationship and their interaction with their parents. Sa panahon na ito, syempre understandable talaga na andyan madaming stress, andyan pa yung issue ng quarantine. So paano po natin malalaman na hindi na lang ito yung basta yung normal na lungkot pero mukhang kailangan na natin ng professional help. Ang goal ho talaga natin is hindi naman ho makaramdam ng lungkot, hindi maging nerbyosa at some point in time because being sad, being anxious is a normal feeling. Natural ho na mararamdaman natin yon in the course of the way we live our lives, lalo na ngayong may pandemic. Pero paano ba natin malalaman na hindi na sapat yung paraan natin kung paano hinahandle ang mga bagay-bagay? Number one, if you feel that you are more irritable than usual, mas madalas na mainit yung ulo to the point na even the minor things tends to irritate you. That's one. Second, there is also such a thing as parent fatigue. Yung halimbawa ko dumadating yung time na yung bagay na gustong-gusto mo naman gawin, yung bagay na nag-e-enjoy ka naman such as taking care of your children suddenly becomes a chore for you. Enjoyable siya before, pero bakit ngayon, it has become a struggle. So kung ganun yung nararamdaman natin, then we will have to watch out kasi baka yun yung sinasabi natin ng beginnings of a burnout. And of course, ang isa sa pinaka-importante is because of how you feel, dahil ikay sobra yung lungkot, wala ka ng motivation, you have failed to do your task. For example, if you are a housewife and dahil nga nalulungkot ka, dahil sobra yung nervyos, most of the time ay hindi ka na lamang nakikihalubilo sa yung mga anak. That's a red flag. Another is kung halimbawa na ikaw ay dahil dun sa lungkot, ang nagiging tendency yung pag-run mo ng household has become a struggle at parang mas napakahirap gawin 
decide at hindi ka maka-decide paano yung gagawin mo, then it's also a reason for evaluation. If things become out of control and then your ability to do your task well is affected, then it's time for an evaluation. Kung tingin po natin ay kailangan natin ng help or ng evaluation, saan po tayo pwedeng kumunta? Marami po tayong available na resources ngayon. Ang mental health professionals natin, they are a lot of choices now. No? Specifically, ang laging nakukonfuse is yung psychologist or psychiatrist. Kanino ba ako lalapit? Ano yung pagkakaiba nila? Both of them, kaya pong mag-handle ng mental health concerns. The only difference is, for example, because ang psychiatrist po is a doctor, they can actually prescribe medications for you. For example, if you have problems with sleep, if you have thoughts of wanting to hurt yourself, so meron po silang pwedeng ibigay na gamot to try to address yung inyong mga nararamdaman. So you sila yung psychiatrist. At the same time, aside from prescribing medications, pwede rin po silang mag-psychotherapy. They will help you understand why you feel the way you do. No, bakit ba ganito yung emotion ko? Bakit ba ako madaling uminit yung ulo? No, they will help you understand yourself. On the other hand, a psychologist po is also equally trained in handling mental health problems. Pero pag sa psychologist po, they cannot give you medications, but definitely they will be able to do psychotherapy. So mapapag-usapan po yung mga bagay na maiintindihan ninyo saan nang gagaling no, yung lungkot, saan nang gagaling yung anxiety. And what you can do now, thankfully, meron na tayong internet, so marami na ho tayong access for it. Most of the time, what we do is online. Kasi nga po, because of the pandemic, nalilimit ho kasi yung amount of time that we have to spend with our clients or patients. No? Therefore, most of us are doing telemedicine. So my suggestion is if you feel that way po, if you feel there is a struggle already that is going on, you can seek options to look for a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Probably start po looking into the internet who are the persons available and alin yung malapit. Preferably rin po, do na do nasa pandemic tayo ngayon, you still choose yung medyo malapit sa area ninyo kasi ho, one way or the other, babalik na rin ho tayo sa normal way of doing things. Important din ho kasi yung follow-ups. Meron bang website or Facebook page yung mga societies na meron information about yung iba-ibang mga profession? They are really widespread. Eh. I don't think there is a specific directory that is available for the mental health services. But Philippine Mental Health Association has one. Probably, you also can go to Philippine General Hospital, PGH. Among Rodriguez, Memorial Medical Center, they also have acute psychiatric unit. So usually, ho, kung meron hong psychiatric services dun sa mga hospitals, Medical City, Makati Med, I am sure meron po kayong makikita na specialist para sa pangangailangan ninyo. Gusto rin po namin sana tanggalin yung stigma around seeking help for mental health issues. Minsan kasi, andyan pa rin yung misconception na, ay, pag nagpapatingin sa psychiatrist, si Raul yan. Pero hindi po. Dahil lahat po ng tao, at some point, lalo na with the stress and the pressures nowadays, it's not really our fault that we have mental health issues. Hindi ibig sabihin na meron tayong mental health issues eh, mahina tayo, o sira ulo tayo. It really has to do with the circumstances, with the balance of the chemicals in our brain, the signals that our brain is sending. It has nothing to do with character or weakness. So huwag po tayo mahiya o huwag po tayo matako to ask help. Hindi lang po ito para sa atin, pero para rin po ito sa mga pamilya natin. And don't forget that as parents, we also have to practice self-care. Even simple things like drinking enough water, getting enough sleep, making time every day to exercise, making the time to pray. Talagang malaki po ang magagawa niyan para makatulong sa ating mental health. Dr. Lysel, meron pa po kayong mga additional tips para sa mga parents na nanonood sa video? Thank you very much for emphasizing na ang aming profession, ang mental health services po, ay hindi lamang para doon sa mga nawawala na sa sarili. Okay. 
ano pa ba yung other tips? Number one po, sa dami ho ng kailangan natin gawin sa buhay, lalo na ho sa isang katulad natin na mamis. Karamihan ho sa atin, hindi lang naman isa yung role na ginagampanan. My suggestion is, if there is an investment that you will have to do, invest in self. Care. Kasi nga, kapag ka ho, hindi ho natin aalagaan ng ating mga sarili, magiging mas mahirap na alagaan ang, ang mga tao sa ating paligid. So, invest in self-care. How? Kailangan ho, i-enjoy pa rin. Meron pa rin ho tayong tinatawag natin na me-time. And we don't feel guilty about it. Minsan iba sa atin, no, sa sobrang dami ng gagawin, ultimo magpagupit or magpapedicure, parang walang time. So please find that me time. Because if you recall, kapag ka ho, mas naaalagaan niyo rin ho yung sarili niyo, you are also less irritable. Hindi madaling uminit yung ulo. So invest in self-care. And then number two, nurture relationships that are warm. Paano ho yung ginagawa? Kahit ho sa inyo, yung mga anak. For example, kasi if you notice kung marami ho kayong anak, communicating with them together, minsan overwhelming din siya. So my suggestion is also find time to be with them one-on-one. Kasi kapag kahul, isa-isa mo ho silang nai-interact, mas marami ka rin natutuklasan sa kanila. So probably, pwede yon one-on-one with your children and then all together para makikita mo rin yung dynamics pagka kasama mo na silang lahat. Of course, you also have to nurture relationships with your partner. So, importante rin ho na meron ho kayong time together. Hindi ho yung time lang para pag-usapan kung ano ho yung problema, kung ano yung mga dapat gawin. So, important yon. And of course, kahit ho tayo may mga pamilya, may mga partners na, let's not forget to also be in touch with our friends. Kasama ho yun sa balance of things. Nakailangan pa rin po na tayo yung nag enjoy with our friends. And then, one important thing that you also have to remember is to practice gratitude. Mahirap nga po ang sitwasyon ngayon. But definitely, if we try to see things in a perspective that there is always something to be thankful for, and doing that practice will actually be very helpful. And the last is to practice kindness. Kasi po, ang kindness, let's try to look for opportunities to be kind. Kasi yung kindness po goes both ways. How? Kapag gumawa ka ng isang magandang bagay, hindi ba we feel good about it? At yung feel good feeling na yun, maglalast yun for quite a time. Not only we are happy, pero yung recipient ng kindness will also be happy. Therefore, perpetuating yung positive feeling that we want. So, those are some of the tips that we can use to help us mentally healthy even at a time like this. Para po sa ating mga manunood, sa araw na ito, make sure that we devote kahit na just 10 minutes for our self-care. Do one thing na makatulong sa atin. Thank you very much, Doc Lysel. Thank you. Thank you very much for watching our video today sa DepEd Podcast. Babalik po kami next year with more videos for our audience para sa inyo. Pero magkakaroon kami ng isa pang special video sa December na po para po sa isang special Christmas message from DepEd Podcast. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that notification button so you don't miss our videos. And also, like us on Facebook and visit our website at devbedpitas.com. Thank you!